how are we supposed to engage with these dopamine evoking activities in ways that are healthy and beneficial for us? How do we achieve these peaks, which are so central to our well-being and experience of life without dropping our baseline? If you take something or do something that leads to huge increases in dopamine, afterward, your baseline should drop because there isn't a lot of dopamine around to keep your baseline going. And so people feel pretty lousy and many people make the mistake of then going and pursuing the dopamine evoking, the dopamine releasing activity or substance again, thinking mistakenly that it's going to bring up their baseline. It's going to give them that peak again. Not only does it not give them a peak, their baseline gets lower and lower because they're depleting dopamine more and more and more. I didn't have no motivation to do it. Zero motivation to do anything. Zero motivation to have a shave, zero to brush your teeth, even have a shower, nothing. I can't tell you in words how I felt, how down I was. When you lose control of your own mind, you're in a bad place. When we expect something to happen, we are highly motivated to pursue it. If it happens, great. We get the reward. The reward comes in various chemical forms, including dopamine. And we are more likely to engage in that behavior again. This is the basis of casino gambling. This is how they keep you going back again and again and again, even though on average, the house really does win. If you are engaged in activities, school, sport, relationship, etc., where you experience a win, you should be very careful about allowing yourself to experience huge peaks in dopamine unless you're willing to suffer the, the crash that follows and waiting a period of time for it to come back up. I've experienced the highest highs and the lowest lows in life. If mental health could bring somebody as big as me and as strong as me and, you know, the stereotype heavyweight champion of the world to my knees, then it could bring anybody to the knees. And I thought to myself, if I can show the world that you can come back from it and to get back in shape and get back to the top, then anybody can do it. I knew something was wrong with me my whole life. Growing up as a child, I, I'd feel a, a, a loneliness even when I was with other people. I wasn't a confident character what you see today. I was a very shy, reserved, skinny little whippet kid. I was always told that I couldn't do stuff and, and I'd never do anything, I'd never achieve anything. So that made me worse, basically. Dopamine is one currency of craving, motivation and desire and pleasure. Once it reaches a threshold of low dopamine, we just feel like, hmm, we can't really get pleasure from anything anymore. What used to work doesn't work anymore. So it starts to look a lot like the more severe addictions or the more acute addictions to things like cocaine and amphetamine, which lead to these big increases, these big spikes in dopamine, and then these very severe drops in the baseline. There are activities that we can do that will give us healthy, sustained increases in dopamine, both the peaks when they happen and to maintain or even increase our baseline levels of dopamine. So how do we do that? What are some of these activities? Now, of course, we all should engage in activities that we enjoy. I certainly do. Everybody should. A huge part of life is pursuing activities and, and things that we enjoy. The key thing is to understand this relationship between the peaks and the baseline and to understand how they influence one another. Because once you do that, you can start to make really good choices in the short run and in the long run to maintain your level of dopamine baseline. So for anyone that's experienced a real drop in baseline who has addictive tendencies, whether or not their behaviors or substances, that is always going to be the path forward is going to be either cold turkey or through some sort of tapering to limit interactions with the what would otherwise be the dopamine evoking behavior or substance feeling of friction and effort to an internally generated reward system and this is not meant to be vague this is a system that exists in your mind that exists in the minds of humans for hundreds of thousands of years by which you're not just pursuing the things that are innately pleasurable food sex warmth water when you're thirsty but the beauty of this mesolimbic reward pathway that I talked about earlier is that it includes the forebrain. So you can tell yourself the effort part is the good part. I know it's painful. I know this doesn't feel good, but I'm focused on this. I'm going to start to access the reward. You will find the rewards, meaning the dopamine release inside of effort if you repeat this over and over again. But 
It's also important to understand that dopamine controls our perception of time. When and how much dopamine we experience is the way that we carve up what we call our experience of time. When we engage in an activity, let's say school or hard work of any kind or exercise, because of the reward we are going to give ourselves or receive at the end, the trophy, the Sunday, the meal, we actually are extending the time bin over which we are analyzing or perceiving that experience. And because the reward comes at the end, we start to dissociate the neural circuits for dopamine and reward that would have normally been active during the activity. And because it all arrives at the end, over time, we have the experience of less and less pleasure from that particular activity while we're doing. When we focus only on the trophy, only on the grade, only on the win as the reward, you undermine that entire process. So how do you do this? You do this in those moments of the most intense friction, you tell yourself, this is very painful. And because it's painful, it will evoke an increase in dopamine release later, meaning it will increase my baseline in dopamine. But you also have to tell yourself that in that moment, you are doing it by choice and you're doing it because you love it. Some of the things on these lists of dopamine act evoking activities are things like chocolate, coffee, even if it's indirect, sex and reproduction provided it's healthy consensual is central to our evolution and progression as a species. So food, exercise, if that evokes your dopamine. But there's also a version of this where sometimes you don't do the dopamine enhancing activities. You don't ingest anything to increase your dopamine. You just do the exercise. You don't do the exercise and expect dopamine to arrive through some what we call exogenous source as well. You might think, well, that sounds lame. I want to continue to enjoy exercising. Ah, but that's exactly the point. If you want to maintain motivation for school, exercise, relationships, or pursuits of any duration and kind, the key thing is to make sure that the peak in dopamine, if it's very high, doesn't occur too often. And if something does occur very often, that you vary how much dopamine you experience with each engagement in that activity. The ability to access this pleasure from effort aspect of our dopaminergic circuitry is without question the most powerful aspect of dopamine and our biology of dopamine. You need to stimulate the mind. And I think training is a perfect way to do it, working out, exercising. Whether you can do a lot or a little, you must do something. I give myself short-term goals and long-term goals. And I plan things more now. Where if, if I'm just not got anything on the horizon, I, I tend to wander and my mind goes able. But when I've got something on plan and I've got things going and I want to do this, this and this, even if it's, you don't, it doesn't have to be big things. It can be small, tiny goals that mean something to you as a person, as an individual. Example, many of you are probably familiar with David Goggins, former Navy SEAL, who essentially has made a post-military career, career out of explaining and sharing his process of turning the effort into the reward. There are many other examples of this too, of course. Throughout evolutionary history, there's no question that we revered people who were willing to go out and forage and hunt and gather and caretake in ways that other members of our species probably found exhausting and probably would have preferred to just put their feet up or soak them in a cool stream rather than continue to forage. But just to highlight the things that can interfere with and prevent you from getting dopamine release from effort itself. Don't spike dopamine prior to engaging in effort. And don't spike dopamine after engaging in effort. Learn to spike your dopamine from effort itself.